By the end of this video, you will be able to break or join note beams within the music notation software at MuseScore Studio. Let's get started. So in addition to showing you how to break or join note beams, I'm also going to show you how to change global beam settings. So you want to stick around to the end of the video for that. So MuseScore makes it simple to join or break note beams. What you want to do is, let's say I would want to create a separation between the first two beams and the second two beams here. What I want to do is select the third note. It'll turn blue. Again, make sure you're in selector mode and not note put input mode. So note input mode is this top left hand side. Again, when it's blue, that means it's on. So I want to turn it off. So I've selected that note. Once I've selected that note, now I want to click on properties. And in properties, you're going to see there's a section for note. And you might need to drop it down with the arrow. And you're going to click on beam. So with the beam properties, now I can click on no beam. If I click that one, then there'll be no beam between that note and all the notes. That's not what I want, actually. I actually want to break the beam to the left. So that's the option that I want. So you see, it was able to break that beam. So now I have a group of two and a group of two. And then if I want to change that back, I could change it to join beams, which is the setting here, or auto, which is usually set for join, join beams or whatever the global settings are set at. Let's say I would like to change the note beam for the first note. Again, same thing. You just click on the note. And then make sure you left click on properties, go down to beam, and then the beam type will be there. And then I'm just going to click on no beam for that first one. So you can see now it broke the beam between this note and the next note. In order to rejoin that beam, I'm just going to left click on join beams. So this mainly works for eighth notes, 16th notes, 32nd notes, and the like. So uh, you can do this across a rest as well. So you can see I have a rest here. Let's say I want to beam this note to this note. What I want to do is actually select the rest. And when you select the rest, you can left click on that. And again, you can go to properties and there's going to be a beam type here under rest because there are beams around it. And right now it has no beam. So if I'd like to join the beam, I just click on join beams and that will join that to the next note across the rest. In order to undo anything, you just press control Z. Let's walk through some of the other beam settings. Uh, so let's say I've clicked that first note and I'd like to go down to properties and then beam. You can see that there is a beam direction, so I can go ahead and change that to down or up. So you can see it changes that as I uh, select each one of those. I could force horizontal, so that makes the beam uh, you know, horizontally even there. So uh, you can do that as well. There are some additional options here. You can change the height of the beam if you want. And so you can uh, make that higher or lower. And then the same thing with the end of the beam. So this is the beginning of the beam and the end of the beam. You're changing the height there. To change it back to the original settings, you can just click on reset. If you would like to change all the beams in a selection, let's say I select the entire measure, I just click in the middle of the measure. What I can do is use the pal palettes for changing all of the beams in that measure or selection. So I'm going to click on palettes and then I'm going to look for beam lines. I need to add that palette or beam properties. That's what it is. So beam properties. So I'm going to click on add. So now I've added beam properties to my palette. So you can see it's there on the top. And again, let me get my selection again. So it seems to have unselected that. So I'm going to select that, go to beam properties, and then I can change the beams for all of the notes in that measure by just clicking on each one of the settings. So if I want to change the beam settings for either of these, you can just do it that way as well. So basically join beams or separate all the beams. And that's another way that you can beam across a rest as well. Lastly, there are some global beam settings with the time signature. So right now you can see that this is beaming every four eighth notes. And then same thing, uh, 16th notes before, if I were to add more 16th notes, let's say I were to make these 16th notes, it'll continue to beam those. Uh, so let's say I had uh, some more of those. You can see it uh, selected the four. So it's doing four and four, actually, for each one. Let's say I want to change that so that instead of beaming every four, I want to do something like maybe three, three, and two. What you want to do is you want to be in selector mode and right click on the time signature. Okay, so it's kind of an interesting place. And you're going to go down to time signature properties. I'm going to left click on time signature properties. And that's going to bring up this global setting for the beams. And so it's on the second part of the screen where it says beam groups. So you have beam selector. Again, uh, this is the different selector that you're using for the beams. So where you can change it is actually here. So one eight. So let's say I were to I want to do groups of three, three and two. I want to go to this fourth note here. I'm going to left click and you can see it separated it. If I click on it, it will separate it or join it. So I'm going to separate it. So I want to join that one and I want to join that one. And then I want this one separated. So now I have it in groups of three, three and two. 
And then whenever you are happy with what you have there, you can just click on OK. And you can see now it changed it to a group of three to two. And then if there were to be more here, there'll be three and two. So three, three and two is the grouping. Again, to find that you right click on the time signature, left click on time signature properties, and then you can change this. And if you want to change it back, you can always just click reset and that will change it back to the original. Actually, it looks like reset did not work there. So I'm going to go ahead and change it back manually. So let's go there. Okay, so then I can have it grouped the way I would like it. And then you can change your beam selector type well as well. And you can do the same thing with the 16th notes and the 32nd notes. Again, by clicking on a note, it will separate it. By click left clicking on it, it will join it. And when, you, when you're happy with that, you just press OK, and that will change the global settings for your entire piece. So you now know how to break or join beams within MuseScore Studio 4.5. If you made it this far into the video, you likely want to get the most out of using MuseScore Studio. I made a complete beginner's guide showing you A to Z how to get started with this software. I'll put a link to that video here.